We're here at Sebring and we've come over to Just Aircraft and we're going to talk about some different engines on this very impressive airframe that we've talked about before. So I kind of likened it to what Gary said that there's an airframe component to the Super Stoll, which is what we're standing in front of, and now there's a growing engine component to it as well. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Gary Schmidt and Troy Woodson, Woodland, excuse me, and we want to ask you some questions about development. Now I want to start off with the one right behind you, Gary, because it's here, it's right in the camera's eye. I know you haven't flown this one yet, but what are your expectations about the now owned by Continental, the Titan engine? And we've seen this on some other airplanes. What are you expecting it to do for the Super Stole? We're very excited about this engine. We can't wait to fly it. We tried all we could do to get it ready to be flying here at the show, but we couldn't get it finished. But we expect good things from this engine. We've seen it on other airplanes, and we just... We just think it, it'll give us a true 180 horsepower. It seems like it's really doing a good job for the folks at uh, uh, Cub Crafters who started with this engine. I honestly hadn't heard much about it before then, but it's been kind of getting its way around the community now. And you had such an impressive engine when you started with the Rotax. Uh, so you had a 100 horsepower Rotax on here, and it, that's what I flew with you, I believe. And that was very impressive just by itself. I can't hardly imagine how it will perform now with this, but you, and you don't know with this one yet, I know that. It's kind of too clean to be a used engine yet, I guess, but, uh, but you have had some experience with the UL power, which you're also working with. Is that right? Yes. And which engine have you already flown with the UL power? We have both already flown the 180 horsepower UL engine, 520i, I think is the number. Yeah, I think that's the number for it, yeah. And it's a it's an impressive engine. It's very smooth. It's six cylinder. Very oh, that's smooth. a six cylinder. Yes. I forgot that. Okay, right. Very smooth running engine, and we were we were consistently getting three thousand foot a minute climb out of that engine. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Goodness and, and gracious. We're not, we're not exactly sure that we had it propped exactly right. Wow. So. Wow, 3,000. I think that's the highest number I've heard of in this space. So you want to comment, Troy, on? Um, on, on how that engine has worked for you and I mean you got so much time with the Rotax which I assume you're still using the Rotax right? Yeah we're, we're most definitely still using the Rotax and uh, that's um, pretty much what I have all my time in is the Rotax so that's kind of why I'm getting kind of excited about this you know when you run the thrust you know we're doubling actually better than double in our amount of thrust. Is that right? Wow. For an extra 100 and probably 50, 60 pounds. So it is it, that much more weight though. Okay. It is. The okay. airplane, this air, for this particular airplane right here, um, like Gary said, we didn't get it finished flying, but we did, uh, we did weigh it and I got to put it on a little bit of a diet to meet that, that 430 useful uh, yeah, the 430 useful uh, load. Yeah, that calculation that they require. Yeah. For the 890. But um, we'll get it back a week from now. We'll get the get some more avionics out of it. Maybe s scrape some paint off something. We'll get it down there <laughs> where we can uh, we make light sport with it. You know, I w that's important to me. Um, unfortunately, you know, I, we designed the cowling and everything around just the old O320, so guys could just put that on there. And unfortunately, that they won't make weight with the stock one. They're going to have to you know order some of those components the cowling you're referring to when you make that yeah comment? the okay. cowling I, I we we carved the cowling around the stock o320 and uh um you know in in you know in hopes that you could just put any engine on it but you, you it's too heavy to make light sport okay. you'll have to go with something like what titan is offering yeah so the advantage in you keeping it within now it's going to be experimental aircraft well we're still we're still going to make like it's experimental yeah but but we'll, you want we'll to keep it so sports. a sport pilot yeah. can fly without a medical all that which means you've got to stay in those parameters yeah. for light sport okay so that's great in order to handle the weight on the nose we we lengthened the fuselage okay to keep everything in by how much cg we lengthened the fus fuselage two feet Two feet. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. That was a pretty big change then. Yes. And um, 
the cowling is actually a little bit longer in the front too with the with the he bigger heavier engine on it now is that is that a weight and balance thing or is that an it, aerodynamic control thing or both it, or it, well it's a weight and balance thing when we started running the numbers to to even put this engine on you know we 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 couldn't do it on our existing airframe anyway so we had to change some of the components in it as far as beefing things up so on and so forth um but with the extra length, it has that more that, I uh, uh, hate to say cub feel, but it slows everything down. I kind of like the short, um, agile. From handling standpoint? Yeah, okay. light. It's a little snappier to handle well, when this it's is, shorter? This is, yeah, exactly. This, and it slows everything down, you know, but, and a lot of people like that. Well, yeah, I was going to say, for a lot of people, you're so versatile with it. All of you guys that fly these things all the time. Uh, but I'm guessing that for somebody newer to the airframe, it might actually be better if it's a little it, more it, docile. It, it we'll makes call a big it. difference in the uh, in the landing and taking off. You know, having that extra, it was uh, almost two feet. It uh, it it definitely you can definitely tell a big difference. You'll fly it and you'll see what I'm saying. Yeah, good. I'll look it, forward to that. It's so more cub like, but. Well, we won't hold that against you. Right. A lot of people like those pretty little yellow tail draggers. Well, and I, now I, I you've got so too. much more to offer here. Yeah, of course they're they're popular because they're nice little airplanes. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited to see these big engines on these things. I, I, and I kind of am surprised I'm saying that because I'm I'm personally love the 80 horsepower Rotax. I, I, That's a wonderful little engine. But you know, if you want to do the magic stuff, well, more power is a good thing, and pilots seem to eat that up. So why not? Yeah. So but, when do you think you're gonna fly the Titan? Um, you'll probably see it flying next week. Okay, so by Sun and Fun, you'll be flying this oh, one. Oh, absolutely. Then? Okay, we'll have, great. We'll, we'll be down there. Well, we'll look for you at Sun fun. and Fun. But uh, a lot of good information about Superstole. You've had a nice run with it. You've gotten some great PR. We were talking about even the Wall Street Journal covering you. That's big stuff. So that's very cool. Okay, Gary. Well, a lot of great information about the Superstole, the multiple engines that you've got. We're excited to see the Titan come out here, and we'll be looking for you at Sun and Fun. Meanwhile, where can people go on the web? to get more information about the company. Just go to our website, justaircraft.com. Okay, great. Lots more about Just Aircraft, about the Titan engine, about Continental engines, about Rotax engines, and all kinds of stuff about Superstole, as well as a lot of other affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Gary Schmidt, Troy Woodland, and myself here at Sebring.